as someone that loves the Harbingers, this is going to be a weird video to make. Redemption for playability. There is a very interesting pattern that playable characters are currently following in order to be considered playable. And this pattern kind of makes people worried for the possibility of antagonists being playable without facing a form of reconciliation, recontextualization, or potential readjustment of their personality. So today, welcome to Redemption for Playability, where I talk about Genshin's really weird and sometimes narratively oppressive criteria for making characters playable. But before that, thank you to Opera GX for sponsoring this video. Opera GX is a browser built specifically for gamers, or if you're like me that uses it for browser games like Dungeons & Dragons. <laughs> I like using Opera GX for the multiple cool features that I use when playing and making videos since they just make my life easier when DMing or researching for stuff. For example, GX Profiles is a really good tool when streaming so you don't accidentally dox yourself and keep your things private. I use GX Profiles when running my D&D games or playing Genshin in the background so my PC doesn't explode! Other features that I personally love using are the following. Forced dark pages help me not lose my eyesight whenever I read stuff online. You can also use custom wallpapers or animated backgrounds because it looks really cool. And last but not the least, you can also use Google extensions through the extension store. I personally like this for my extensions when it comes to Roll20 and other things so I'm really really happy that they have this. And my personal favorite feature is the workspaces on the sidebar that let you sort tabs without any hassle. So download Opera GX with the link down below and comment your favorite personal features on the browser. Oh, and Opera GX is available for mobile, so <laughs> I get to read my fanfictions in the dark. Yes! So let's begin with the question, what makes a character playable? Playability criteria is a weird thing to have in a game like Genshin where the main appeal of the gacha are the characters. On one hand, we're still in the first few chapters of the story, so it's normal to think that playability criteria can change over time. A character's story is never constant and so is the structure of the game given it's meant to evolve. But on the other hand, we are at 50 playable characters. This means that having a pattern for them isn't out of the question. So let's deduce what that pattern is. First is that their character shouldn't have any ongoing bad blood with the Traveler that isn't resolved through a character quest or a storyline upon their release as a playable character. The character could start as an antagonist, but they need to have a form of redemption at the end that addresses a change in the dynamic between the Traveler and the character. Really great examples of this are Tartalia and A. They both started as antagonists in their respective stories, yet the narrative resolves potential animosity they have with the Traveler through their story quests. Tartalia's responsibility in the Archon quest was minimalized with the sudden inclusion of Signora and Zhongli being the overall puppeteers of the situation, despite being a clear accomplice of potential mass genocide. A invoked drastic societal changes that completely shifted the structure and freedom of Inazuma, but in the end, her abolishment of both the Sakoku and the Vision Hunt Decree essentially resolved any potential animosity she would have with the Traveler. Not to mention that other characters don't really show any form of revenge or distaste for that kind of situation. Meaning that everything was good and dandy in the end. Additionally, their core personalities were never unnecessarily sadistic, murderous, or any villainous characteristics that would make a player question, why the hell is the Traveler teaming up with this guy? They're played off as more morally grey characters instead of villainous people. Tertalia's conversation with the Traveler, despite seeming plastic because of his status as a harbinger, holds an air of genuine camaraderie and respect. The Tertalia story quest helps cement the alternative side of Ajax, where he is doing what he can for his family, and that he will protect the people that he loves. A on the other hand received the backstory explanation trope where the death of Makoto was the narrative catapult she needed to recontextualize her actions for eternity. Both A and Tartalia got their necessary narrative resolution to quote-unquote justify the Traveler not being actively hostile with them anymore. The second criteria are for characters like Beidou, Chongyun, and Shenyan, who were released before their introductory quests. Character may not have met the Traveler, but they should not have any hypothetical bad blood in the future. The narrative already made it so that the playable character, despite not meeting the Traveler in the first place, is friendly, amiable, and idealistic enough that meeting the Traveler is immediately a positive connection. Third though is that the character is already an established ally of the Traveler. This one is the easiest because it just makes sense to be at a party with friends, you know? The thing is though, this is standard for any RPG. You don't just go to a party with people you don't like. And honestly, it's not necessarily a bad thing. You're with a party with people that are very kind or very sweet or just are misunderstood. That's not a bad thing in any RPG. 
But to be honest, the criticism still lies, but it's that linear nature that makes it a little unfortunate because there's so many cool potential dynamics you can have with character relationships. Animosity in a party creates cool situations if the narrative fleshes them out properly. A good example of this was the Chasm 2.7, where the narrative experimented with disagreements and petty arguments. Not everyone has to like each other. And the Traveler themselves is a pretty petty character who is quick to voice their anger towards other characters if they have to. It's just really strange that the player characters are cushioned by this unspoken criteria, always resorting to the end goal of friendship with the Traveler with little to no repercussions. But now that I have those laid out for all of you, it's time to voice my concerns. When I say redemption, I don't mean the Traveler's forgiveness, but that is one part of it. What I mean when I say redemption is narrative redemption. For example, negative personality traits and flaws are underplayed or continuously explained without real repercussions or consequences. We as an audience are aware that they did something wrong, but the narrative and the people around them in the universe dismiss the weight of those actions. For example, Zhongli's decision to test Li Yue through actively putting the nation in danger was accompanied by a line that basically tries to undermine the effects of his decision. He would have stepped in if they weren't ready. If you know the term Mary Sue, you would understand this very well. It's not that a character has no flaws, it's that the narrative never plays on those flaws properly. Qualities like impulsivity, mischief, or deceit are always paired with altruistic motivations like they're doing this for the greater good or they're actually really good people deep down within, you just need to read the backstory. This isn't a bad thing necessarily, but if you do this too many times, you're bound to create a repetition that just limits your characters by so much. The concept of redemption for playability is such a dangerous mindset because so far as we've seen from 50 playable characters, it can undermine a character's structure for the sake of just being companions with the traveler. There is little to no versatility when it comes to the friendships the Traveler has with the playable characters because they're all seen as perfect and ideal friendships where the Traveler is a respectable support system and the playable character undergoes their monologue of angst or their character development in one story quest. We currently have no outlier in the playable characters. A playable character that actively hates is forced to cooperate or present unpleasant qualities that would show distrust and problems. Additionally, the Traveler doesn't insult or talk down on other playable characters or call them out on their bullshit. So far as we've seen from the playable characters, they will always need to be pacified through backstory. Genshin's playable characters are relatively caricatures of their lore counterparts. Whether we like it or not, the way that the game portrays their characters, save for very important people, is relatively shallow. To be fair, in any story, not everyone gets to be the main character. Some people just never really get the character development like A. Some people are just meant to be static and usually that's okay, it means that they're supporting cast. Which moves me though to my next point. Harbinger playability and villain playability by extension is very difficult to talk about for several reasons. Because playability has a very big tie-in with the Traveler's morality. The story needs to justify the Traveler being companions with people that have committed murder, kidnapping, controversy, heist, and everything in between. The Harbingers currently don't have the best relationships with the Traveler save for Tartalia. Additionally, these people are actively seen as sadistic, cruel, and manipulative. If the narrative tries to redeem them in the same way that they tried to redeem Tertali and A, and the Traveler just forgives them, it will feel like a repetitive cop-out. For example, Scaramouche is someone that willingly slaps his subordinates for the sake of emotional curiosity. Yes, he has the storyline of the husk of opulent dreams, but that should never excuse the actions he did as Scaramouche. It should recontextualize it, but not redeem. Same goes for someone like Il Dottore, someone who is willing to jeopardize the lives of children for the sake of science, and has threatened the man's life if he didn't get the results he wanted. He also killed a subordinate for disobedience despite having a clear shot of Deluxe head instead. Or someone like La Senora, someone that is apathetic to the lives of others and is constantly expressing exhaustion when dealing with people she believes are underneath her. This includes using lethal force on her own subordinates. But being completely honest, I don't think redemption is necessary for playability if Hoyo decides to do this properly in the years to come. The decision to make a character playable lies in the overall morality of the Traveler. 
If the traveler themselves have a change in outlook or grow a grittier personality given the hardships they face, then becoming companions with people like the Torre or Piero would be justified in the future. But that would just return to the pattern. I am a firm believer that a good character has their flaws, but a narrative needs to respect those flaws in the first place. The problem though is that these characters are products. Almost all of the quests these characters undergo through show them in a positive light, undergoing through trauma, sacrificing themselves for others, or conveying their stronger qualities. It's difficult for Genshin to market a character that was an accomplice of a mass genocide, so they market him instead as the big brother figure that just happens to have combat tendencies. This is why I'm personally curious as to how they'll make the other characters that were actively not just antagonists, but also villains, playable. How will they justify the Traveler wanting to work with them in the first place? How will the Traveler's interactions be with them? Will it be out of disdain or passive aggression, or will it be through constant fighting or insults? It's that interesting dynamic that I hope is explored in Sumeru if we ever do get a playable Scaramouche, or a playable Harbinger, or honestly anyone that the narrative just doesn't paint as a good person. But yes, that's it for me today. I just wanted to talk about Genshin's weird character playability criteria, but honestly, I genuinely think that they'll change it in the future. I just made this video now to voice my criticisms, but I'm genuinely optimistic for the future of Genshin. Or maybe I'm wrong and nothing changes. Hopefully not. Anyway, my name is Aster and thank you for chilling with me.